Well, I sure am glad that no SCPs have escaped containment today. What's that? Hundreds are on the loose at any given time? And there's nothing we can do about it. And they knocked over the fridge? With my lunch in it? That's great. That's just great. Well, here we go. Hello horror heads and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. I'm your horror host Keegan Hughes and today we're taking a look at some more worst case scenarios straight out of the foundation's files. The Top 5 Scariest SCP Creatures That Managed to Escape, Part 4. These skips on the loose is definitely bad news. Before we get started, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more containment crackers. Wicked, let's get going. Coming in at number 5, we have SCP-993. It's Bobble the Clown, everybody! Be honest, if you walked in and saw a child watching something that looked like this, would you think twice about it? Even when he's menacing townspeople with his knife, it looks like good, clean fun. And that's what makes Bobble so insidious. He's out here teaching children some terrible, forbidden knowledge, all while maintaining the appearance of an innocent mascot. And even if you were to see red flags while Bobble was on TV, there wouldn't be any way for you to detect it. Unless you're under 10, which I genuinely hope none of our viewers are based on some of the stuff we discuss here. Bobble is only viewable by kids 9 and under. Anyone else with eyes on the screen will black out for the duration of the program. And not the fun, headache inducing kind of blackout either, I'm talking about the scary what just happened kind. Nobody at the foundation has been able to directly view an episode of Bobble the Clown and as such has interviewed a variety of children about the program. The results are worrying. Kids will describe the show teaching them how to do violent and morally reprehensible things. In the episode titled Bobble's Kitchen Surprise, the animated clown teaches kids to kidnap people, then skin, gut, and cook them. In another episode called Bobble's Sneaky Saturday, he's explaining to the kids how to remain unseen in crowded places before he follows a woman to her home and kills her with a butcher's knife. He even discusses how to cause containment breaches and murder researchers at the foundation. Not the wholesome educational entertainment that most parents want their children consuming, but it's still like a little bit better than Elsa and Spider-Man videos and mystery again boxings, I guess. Coming in at number 4, we have SCP-990. The future is scary. Keep that in mind as I describe this dream prophet. Foundation members are the only people who seem to be aware of 990's existence. Nobody else in the world has reported dreams involving this future sighted fellow. He's a human male dressed in a Cold War era suit who only appears in dreams. Never sighted in real life, he shows up with prophetic visions of the soon to be. When he appears in a dream, he'll bring news of upcoming end of world scenarios that the Foundation can stop. The first recorded instance of this happening involved an agent who slept for 40 hours straight only to awaken in a highly agitated state rambling about the end of the world. He had foreseen a series of events leading to several tactical nukes being launched resulting in the extermination of 98% of the human race and a total collapse of human society. By relaying this info to a mobile task force, they were able to eliminate the threat that was going to begin the chain reaction. Unfortunately, this agent died of shock like symptoms following this outburst. 990 doesn't just predict doomsday either. He's also capable of foreseeing the deaths of doctors and researchers and even clued the foundation into a highly dangerous SCP that they had yet to contain. 990 only appears when he wants to appear though and nobody has been successful in contacting him outside of a random dream. Where is he getting this info? Why does he feel compelled to let the foundation know? Is there something sinister going on that we don't know about? Only time will tell. Or maybe. Just maybe, 990 himself will. Coming in at number 3, SCP-1504. For all of the complaining that this entity does, I would love to have the anomalous abilities that he possesses. First, he's unkillable. Like, nothing anyone can do will kill this man. Even self-inflicted gunshot wounds to the head won't cause any lasting damage. Secondly, he's always going to be reported as unremarkable. He doesn't stand out in a crowd, and nobody pays any particular attention to him. After putting myself in front of millions of people on the internet, that sounds like a relaxing time. The final odd skill he has is the most interesting. Anything that 1504 does will be perceived by surrounding individuals as being totally normal under the circumstances. He can attack people and they will believe that circumstance or their own doing has hurt them. He can say and do whatever he pleases and people will react as if he was just sitting there normally. 
Once he punched a foundation doctor in the nose only to have the doctor excuse themselves for having an unexpected nosebleed. Imagine the freedom. You could walk around taking whatever you wanted from stores, strolling through restricted areas, burping, farting, scratching yourself in public. A dream come true to be honest. Of course our pal doesn't really want to chill and be cool. No, instead he wants to cause containment breaches and nuclear device detonations. Great work dude. He hates his life as nobody really hears what he's saying, which has led him down a very sad and violent path. The scariest thing about him is that you could be interacting with him at any time and he could be messing you up big time. You'd have no idea. He could be causing all these awful things going on around you. He could even kill your family right in front of your eyes and you wouldn't know it was him. Coming in at number 2, SCP-1838. Red Bear Bob's food truck food is the only food I want to eat. This delicious SCP is a food truck that appears near pro football games around 18 to 36 hours before kickoff. It's a pretty standard looking food truck, usually run by two instances that we'll call 1838-1 from now on. These folks are always changing with no discernible pattern when it comes to age, ethnicity, gender, etc. Forget asking them about themselves though, they're very secretive. Bob's food truck tends to sling standard fare like burgers, fries, hot dogs, chicken and pop. This food known as 1838-2 is anomalously delicious. So much so that anyone who eats it will turn down any and all other food. They'll also express a deep desire to continue eating Bob's burgers. Give me that cauliflower's cumin from inside the house burger with cauliflower and cumin. Foundation agents do their best to prevent this food being served as people who eat it will likely starve afterwards. This has led to confrontations known as Lissa events. Unprovoked violence against 1838-1 instances will cause one of these events as well, in which a seemingly unlimited number of food truck employees will exit the truck, wielding tire irons, crowbars, baseball bats, fire axes and more. This will only stop when the responsible party is justly terminated. Gotta love food truck gang violence. If you sneak in through the door these folks are coming through, you'll find yourself in an elevator. That elevator leads to a huge room full of suspended walkways and in this room you can meet Bob. Bob is a very perfect person. He makes everyone want to be Bob. There have also been sightings of ads for a Red Bear Bob's general department store which sounds like an anomalous Trader Joe's. Equal parts of me want that and don't want it. And lastly at number 1 we've got SCP-2901. If you're familiar with the SCP-1000 Bigfoot story this will be of similar interest. A well known cryptid cover story for something much more sinister and potentially unstoppable. Most people believe that 2901 is a species of nocturnal carnivorous scavengers that look like big moths. This is technically a true description. They can move through space time freely meaning levitation, flight and teleportation are all on the table. Despite this they are still susceptible to conventional weapons. Our light following friends are also able to emit acoustic cancellation fields around them probably meant to aid in stealth. Agents have been told to stand their ground if confronted by one as running away will only provoke them to chase you. Making threat displays is encouraged and if you do need to fight make sure you're not making physical contact. Containment is basically impossible given their space time abilities so the foundation has settled on quelling civilian suspicion. They've planted stories all across all sorts of media from doctored photos to semi realistic art to falsified eyewitness testimonies even to documentaries hunting these beasts. You've probably seen some of this stuff before because it all sounds very similar to the West Virginia Mothman. Of course this isn't the whole story. These cover stories and Mothman tales are all meant to control information making it to the public. You see for 2901 to maintain stable physical mask approximately 75% of the human population within 500 kilometers needs to be congruent on a singular concept of what it is and does. If this wasn't the case they could essentially run around doing anything. At one point they were highly unstable capable of producing localized CK class scenarios at random. If we keep them as mothmen and keep the legend alive, they become much more manageable and docile. So in the spirit of keeping the world the way it is, long live mothman. I'm not saying it's a bad thing that all these creatures are running free, but I'm also not saying that it's good. The foundation has come up with some halfway decent strategies to mitigate harm, but it is still a wild wild world out there. What do you think? What's your favorite SKP SCP? If you were on death row, what would your last meal be? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more toadish ones from top 5 terrible horror movies that lost studios millions. Schlockrock says top 5 Uwe Boll movies. That's a pretty fun idea actually. We'll see what we can do to make that happen. Faustbot says wait, the URL is fear.com.com? 
I worked at a medium sized website hosting provider and that's the kind of stuff I'd see from domain squatters and the least savvy of our customers. It's true, apparently somebody already owned the regular fear.com at the time and wouldn't give it up so the movie just had to do the next best thing. It was a survey site asking people about their fears but I think it's down now. Matthew Leader says they dropped the ball on this one, the filmmakers they did. Oh I should do that in a Yoda accent. Yoda is that you? <laughs> Have you come back from the dead to chirp filmmakers? Jose Ortega says, I would never call for Keegan's head. I'm just, I'm glad one person doesn't want me dead. It's nice to hear. And Frank S says, yet those cowards in Hollywood won't make Pooty Tang too. <laughs> Someday. Keep fighting the good fight, Frank. That's all the time we have for today. Before I juggle some test tubes full of anthrax, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more unjailable inmates. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Not the wholesome education children were. Not the wholesome education. He is a human male dressed in a. Never. Nah. Once he pounced. Pounced. It pounced the foundation member.